Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Learning C++20. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about StudSpan and how it's implemented in GCC 10 and also uh, Clang 7. So first of all, what is a span? Well, it's basically a new way that we can view um, contiguous sequences of objects, right? And this can either have a static extent or a dynamic extent. But what span really does is it helps us get rid of a um, kind of a bad design pattern, which is say we have a function and it takes a pointer, but you know we also need say uh, the length of data we're going to read out from say that pointer or maybe load into that pointer, right? So um, basically we're passing this pointer and then length pair to say a function, right? So that's very susceptible to things like off by one errors if we, you know, that length that we're passing in doesn't actually match what we have um, for say the buffer that we're passing a pointer to. Right, so it's very susceptible to these errors. So we can get rid of this using std span. So let's go ahead and see a simple example of how that works here. So we'll open up span.cpp and we're, we're gonna have a new header here. So this includes span. And here's an example of that kind of, uh, that poor design pattern. So we're pass we have a function just called print array that takes uh, some array a, which is really just a pointer, and then some integer n that, you know, say represents what we're going to, uh, in this case, print out, the number of elements we're going to print out from this array. So this is very susceptible to something like an off by one error. Um, and likewise, we can't use something like um, uh, range-based for loops, right, with just a pointer. We also can't use things like, you know, uh, find or you know other things from the standard library uh, that we might want to right but we may also not want to you know pay the price for having uh, some kind of more expensive container here so what re we'd really like is just a different way to view right a contiguous range of objects so in this case this is where we have span here so now we have the std span int right s and we can do things like have a range based for loop here and all we're really passing in is just the array, right? So here we're creating an integer array with 10 elements, and those will just be zero through nine. And then we see we can call print array, this function that's more susceptible to an off by one error. So it's very easy if I do something like, what if I do 11 elements, or maybe what if I do nine elements instead? Very easy to make those kinds of mistakes. But with something like print span, I can just pass the array. I can also pass something like a vector here. And the key thing is that the that the span that we're, we're using here doesn't actually own the memory, right? It's just a way that we can look at the memory, right? So when span goes out of scope, it's not like our memory gets freed. It's just a different way that we can look at that array in a way that we can use things like range-based for loops. So we can see that if we go ahead and compile this, right? So we compile span um, using uh, standard equals C++ 2a, and then we run the code we see that both of them do the exact same thing, but one of them looks a whole lot cleaner and a lot nicer. So that's gonna go ahead and do it for this example. As always, all this code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch. So if we go here under repositories and then under C++ 20 samples, you can see we've got this span example on here as well. So feel free to download this, play around with it, let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick and I hope you have a nice day.